Just, I don't know, guys. I guess I'm jacked up on coffee. I've got cabin fever. So, uh, I don't know how many rants. I'm going to go on a rant marathon today, perhaps. Anyway, guys, I just can't help myself with this, with my old buddy Guy McPherson. You know, I, I love Guy McPherson. He is one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes. But this is just my continuing rant against Guy McPherson being such a goddamn sloppy reporter. Just, just he plays so fast and loose with the facts that when when he says these things that are just so outrageously moronic sounding every bit is 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 stupid is is fucking alex jones you know it, it, it why does he do this so anyway this, this is just the latest example that i could not let pass without some comment so this was from uh from a uh when was this put on? Uh, I don't know. I don't know when this actual took place, but this was Guy speaking at some point in Sacramento, California. And so then they were having the question and answer with the audience after his speech. So this is a 37 minute video where he's taking questions from the audience. And so anyway, about 12 and a half minutes into this, Somehow, the whole subject of Jimmy Carter comes up. Uh, you know, Jim, Jimmy Carter, you know, a great guy, but as, but as Guy was correctly pointing out, uh, that, that, even, that even Jimmy Carter, you know, with, with his goddamn solar panels up on the roof and shit, that Jimmy Carter was the one who was, it was on his watch, that, that Alaskan oil drilling really cranked up and this whole thing about the carter doctrine was created you know the carter doctrine basically stating and and um guy is correct on this claiming that the the oil in the middle east belongs to us to to america but anyway so that's where we are with this and i'm going along with this and then so we're going to pick up with Guy McPherson talking about the Carter Doctrine and then drifting off into complete Guy fantasy land. Okay, take it away, Guy. And then we're going to come back and do some fact-checking. The Carter Doctrine. The Carter Doctrine says, with respect to the Middle East, that's our oil over there. And... and, and his administration was the one that really accelerated the the Arctic oil coming from Alaska with the Alaskan pipeline. His administration was responsible for an enormous increase in the military budget, so that the U.S. military is larger than all. It, 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 the U.S. Mil, the U.S. spends more money on its military than the next many many countries in the world combined. At the time. In the early 1970s, anyway, the United States had the, was spending in third place. Third place. It's difficult to even imagine that there were two countries spending more in their military than we were. Because they weren't, you fucking idiot. We take the U.S. military budget for like a week, give it to everybody in this room, and we'd party forever. Right? I mean, it's such an enormous budget now on so many different things relative to the way it was not very long ago. And that happened with the Carter administration. So I, I think that the the person who's in the... Okay. All right. So according to Guy McPherson, you just heard it. I think he was very clear because he repeated it. It was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, who was president for one term between 1976 and 1980, that brought the the United States military budget from the third biggest military budget, I guess, in 1976 when he got there to when he left four years later. It was the biggest military budget and has been there ever since. So that just didn't sound right to me. Okay, guys, I am not an emeritus professor on anything. I am an emeritus Christmas tree salesman, okay? But even 
an, an emeritus Christmas tree salesman when he hears unadulterated horseshit coming out uh, of, of Guy McPherson's mouth. I'm not just going to sit by, sit back and let it pass. So anyway, I got Googling, and it's not that easy, surprisingly, just to answer the goddamn question, uh, who was the biggest military power uh, on this planet but before 1976? But anyway, after digging around for about three or four minutes, I came, I found this article from Global Policy. Global Policy, Military Expenditure Trends for 1960 to 2014 and what they reveal. So this article just, just traces the U.S. military, not just the, not, not just the U.S., but the U.S. and the rest of the planet's military expenditure trends going back to 1960. 16 years before Jimmy Carter ever stepped into the White House with his goddamn solar panels and his Alaskan oil pipelines and his Carter Doctrine. So anyway, this is a long, involved story. Talk about breaking it down. Jesus, I will put the link on to this whole story for anybody who wants to uh, get to it. But anyway... I wanted to bring, this is about halfway through the article, we finally get, this graph is titled, Regional Military Expenditures from 1960 to 2014. So we're going to go back to 1960, the first bar. And as you see, in, in the year 1960, well, what they have it broken down to uh, is kind of irritating. Instead of the United States, they break it down to North America. Well, uh, what percentage uh, do you think uh, Canada and Mexico? So this bar, this first kind of brick red bar is, is North America. Okay, and then the bar next to it, instead of Russia or the Soviet Union in 1960, they call it Europe and Central Asia. So this was Russia and, and every other country uh, in Europe and Central Asia. But of course, we're talking about Russia. So it, it's very clear that in the year 1960, that the, the, the U.S. military budget, just in terms of total billions of dollars, was far and away the number one uh, military spender on, on this planet. Uh, hands down, Russia or Europe and Central Asia combined in the year 1960 was not uh, even, what was it, halfway, was less than half uh, of the U.S. military budget. And then the, the entire rest of the planet was, was a tiny blip on the screen after the, uh, after the U.S. and Russia. Uh, or the Soviet U.S. and Soviet Union, I'd keep needing to be saying, in 1960. So what are these other two countries? Guy McPherson never said what these other two countries were. And so let's look at 1975. Uh, 1975, the only difference is that Russia, by 1975, was about half of what... Uh, the U.S. was, and between 1975 and 1980, during the Jimmy Carter years, uh, the United States stayed virtually identical. It added a tiny, tiny little fraction uh, of money to the total expenditure, while Russia, during those five years, did get bigger and then you really see, uh, you see China really starting to make a play about 1985. Uh, so by the time 
Now, this uh, these statistics is go to 20. So by 2014, the U.S., number one, Russia, well, Europe and Central Asia, number two, and China almost catching up to Russia. So by the year 2014, we were still the biggest. So that's just the total expenditure in dollars, and it's pretty much reflected. So what this chart is, uh, is the same color bars, but this is regional percentage share of global military expenditure from 1960 to 2014. So it, it kind of just plays out another way of looking at it, that in 1960, the United States accounted for about 65, roughly two-thirds of military spending on this planet in 1960 was North America. So again, you got to factor in what Canada and Mexico were adding to that. And Russia was about 30%. China, maybe 5%. So let's again go up to 1975 when, uh, when Jimmy Carter was getting elected. The U.S. had fallen uh, between in, in terms of global percentage simply because Russia had grown. So we were about half half the uh, world's uh, expenditure roughly in 75 and Russia was about I'm saying maybe between 25 and 30 percent and then in the five years that Jimmy Carter was in uh, in office between 1975 and 1980 if, if Guy McPherson had done three minutes of research he would have seen that North America, can you say the U.S.'s percentage of global military expenditures actually fell during the Carter years, while Russia's grew, a Russia, China, and the Middle East all grew. So by the time you get to 2014, so it's showing the United States, let's call this 38%. We're going to call uh, Russia about, Russia and China pretty much even about 22% against the United States is 38%. So anyway, guys, why, why do I keep having these rants about Guy McPherson? You know, you know it's, it's just the simple reason, as I'm always saying, that Guy McPherson does not need to be, to, to, to be so goddamn sloppy. It's not that hard, Guy, to, to keep track of your goddamn facts. And, and this is the reason that, you know, if he can't get something that, that, that some goddamn seventh grade history student ought to understand uh, that the fucking United States of America was the biggest military by far, uh, you know, minimally 16 years before Jimmy Carter uh, ever got in. And, uh, how can we trust anything else out of his fucking mouth? You know, this is how, uh, just shape up, guy, Jesus. But now I'm going to go from picking on Guy McPherson we're, we're going to switch over from uh, a, a rant about Guy McPherson uh, not knowing the most fundamental facts of American military history over to <clears throat> Alex Jones. Alex Jones' is most epic rant in history yesterday. So, um, good God. From, Alex, from Guy McPherson to Alex Jones, but I'm going to save that for... The next rant. Don't you love a uh, guy looking like the Frankenstein monster here? For this rant, come on, you Guy McPherson ass lickers. Come, uh, come beat up on me. Bye, guys.